the continuing stories of Corey, the proverbial angel. Never Put All of Your Eggs in One Basket by Venice Berry and illustrated by Jean Berry. Corey was late. He was supposed to be at Jenny's house an hour ago, but his mother kept talking on the phone. Corey was going to choose a puppy today. Jenny's dog had six puppies and Corey was going to pick one out for his very own. He tried to get her attention by waving his arms. Then he called, Mom! Come on! And Mom shook her head and said yes, but continued to talk. He watched television and he saw a kid throw a frisbee to his dog. The dog jumped high in the air and caught it with his mouth. I'm going to teach my dog to do that, Corey thought. Finally, his mother hung up the phone and they drove over to Jenny's house. Corey got even more excited when they drove past the lady walking her dog. At Jenny's house, Corey rushed to the backyard. He saw two other kids from his class, but he didn't stop to talk. He headed straight for the puppies. As soon as he saw the spotted black and white puppy, Corey knew that that was what he wanted. Come here, come here, he called, and the puppy came to him. Jenny and her mother poured lemonade for everyone as Corey blurted out, This is the one I want, Mommy. This is Circles. Suddenly, Tina jumped off her swing set that one's mine! She cried and rushed over to Corey. Corey held circles closer. I picked them first, Tina said. Corey, his mother spoke softly. Give Tina the puppy and pick another one. Corey looked at circles sadly, then handed him to Tina. Then he stormed over to the back porch and sat on the stairs. Corey, come pick out another puppy, his mother called to him. I don't want another one. I want circles, Corey said. He sat and watched as Tina played with circles. If only Mom would have gotten me here on time, he thought. Corey was so upset that he didn't even notice the small brown and white puppy slowly coming his way. The puppy had white paws, a white stripe on his nose, and the tip of his tail was streaked with white. When the puppy finally made it up the steps, he sat down beside Corey. Go away, Corey said and pushed the puppy behind him. But the puppy was not discouraged. Instead, it moved closer and this time snuggled up under his arm. Pretty soon, Corey found himself petting the puppy. Well, I guess you're kind of cute, Corey said. And the puppy licked his nose. Corey started to giggle, and he just couldn't stop. I like you too, Corey said. Are you ready to go, Corey? His mother called. I want this one, Corey told her, holding up his newfound friend. Well, I thought you only wanted the other one, his mother asked. No, I like this one too. On their way home, Corey's mother told him something that he will always remember. She said, Never put all of your eggs in one basket. The continuing stories of Corey, the proverbial angel. Don't Catch Your Chickens Before They Hatch by Venice Berry and illustrated by Jean Berry. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Corey said out loud as he looked at his calendar and counted off the days. One, two, three, only three days left until my birthday, he thought. On Saturday, Corey will be four years old. He was pretty excited because he'd never been four years old before and he knew his parents were planning a surprise party. He knew about it because he found balloons and party hats hidden under a table. When he got to preschool that morning, he saw Ryan playing on the jungle gym. Have you heard about my party yet? He asked. No, Ryan said. When is it? On Saturday at my house, 
Don't worry. My mom is going to call your mom and tell her all about it, Corey replied. Hey, Corey, come and push me, please. Corey ran over to Linda and gave her a big push. Her swing flew way up in the air and back again. Are you coming to my party? He asked Linda as her swing came closer. What party? She wanted to know. At my house on Saturday for my birthday, Corey smiled. Sure, I'll come, Linda said. All day long, Corey told his friends about the party, and they told other friends. So soon, the news was spread. By Saturday, Corey was so excited he couldn't sleep. He woke up early and rushed downstairs, but there were no party decorations anywhere. Corey's father was reading the newspaper. Good, you're awake, he said. Get dressed so that you can ride to the office with me and pick up some papers. Corey rushed through his bath. His father was taking him away so that they could decorate for his party. He knew it. Once he was dressed, Corey hurried downstairs. In his father's office, Corey tried to be patient, but he couldn't stop thinking about his party. He rolled a small toy car across the window ledge, pretending he could drive. It seemed like his father took forever, but finally they were ready to go. When I get back home and everybody jumps out from their hiding places, I'm going to act so surprised, Corey thought as they left the building. As soon as his dad parked the car, Corey jumped out and ran inside the house. He stopped as he entered and looked around. There were no decorations, no presents, no cake, and no friends. Hi, Corey. Happy birthday, his mom said and gave him a big kiss. Are you ready to go? His father asked his mother. Oh, where are we going? Corey asked. First, we're going to pick up your brother Joseph at Timmy's house. Then we're all going to a nice dinner at Grandma and Grandpa's for your birthday, his mother answered. But, Mom, what about my party? Corey asked. I, I, I thought that you were going to invite my friends over for a big party. I'm sorry, Corey. I didn't know you wanted a party, his mother said. We'll have one next year, son, his father added. Corey sat in the back seat of the car and pouted. How could they do this to me? All of my friends are going to laugh at me, he thought. By the time they stopped at Timmy's house, Corey was ready to cry. Corey, would you go inside and get your brother for us, please? His father asked. Corey got out of the car and walked to the door slowly. He knocked and waited. No one came, so he knocked again. Finally, Timmy came to the door. What took you so long? He teased. Joseph's inside. Corey stepped inside the house to tell Joseph to hurry up, and suddenly, everyone jumped out and yelled, Surprise! Joseph pulled Corey into the den, where there were balloons, party hats, presents, a cake, and all of his friends. Corey smiled as his mother and father entered the room laughing and realized that he'd been tricked. His father bent over and whispered in his ear, Remember, Corey, don't count your chickens before they hatch. The Continuing Stories of Cory, the Proverbial Angel. Where There's a Will, There's a Way, by Venice Berry and illustrated by Jean Berry. Cory usually visited his grandmother and grandfather one weekend out of each month. He loved to sit and listen to his grandfather tell stories. How's my big boy today? his grandmother would always say. She'd always ask the same question as she held him against her chest. But Corey didn't mind because she smelled good, like cookies. And that good smell would stay on his shirt all day. In the corner of the living room, way up at the top of the shelf, there was this shiny glass elephant. Corey would watch for hours as the bright light from the sun danced around it. The glass elephant held its nose up high and stood proudly on top of a musical tray. Sometimes his grandmother would take it down from the shelf for him. 
The elephant turned round and round as it played. Cory, his grandmother called. What's going on in there? It's awfully quiet. Nothing, Mama, Cory mumbled, still thinking about the elephant. Cory walked into the kitchen and watched his grandmother for a minute. Mama, will you get the elephant for me? He asked. In a little while, Cory, his grandmother said as she continued to whip her eggs. Cory looked outside for his grandfather, but he was nowhere in sight. Hum, hum, hum. Hello, ha, ha. He could hear the elephant's tune playing in his head. Cory went back in and looked around the room. His eyes focused on a wooden chair at the desk. He pulled out the chair and pushed it over to the shelf. Cory climbed into the chair, stood on his tippy toes, but still couldn't reach the elephant. He spotted his grandmother's step stool. Cory carried the step stool to the chair, climbed on top, and tried again to reach the elephant. Cory was determined. Cory slid down from the step stool on his stomach. He picked up several large books and set them on top of each other. One, two, three, four. Cory counted the books. Oh, that should be high enough, he thought. Cory didn't notice his grandfather watching him from behind the door. The pile grew too high for Cory to climb upon from the floor. So he pulled the tiny chair beside the big chair and climbed up. He held onto the edge of the shelf with his left hand, carefully balancing his body on top of the pile. Then with his right hand, Cory reached for the elephant. As he pulled the elephant off the shelf, Cory lost his balance and began to fall. He fell straight into his grandfather's arms. What's all this? His grandfather asked. I wanted to hear the elephant. And Mama was too busy, Cory explained. You could have fallen and hurt yourself or broke the elephant, his grandfather said, giving him a serious look. I'm sorry, I won't do it again, Cory promised. His grandfather smiled a big smile at him. It's okay, Cory, his grandfather replied, because you've just learned something very important. Where there's a will, there's a way.